very straightforward. Lots of conversations. We can wander. Wonderful. Wonderful. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm a 40 year old dad and I'm even groaned at that one. <laughs> Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Brian. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. I want to tie it back into rally cars tonight at some point. We haven't talked about rally cars in forever. No, there's but we ul- have a good tie in here. So yeah, there's well, there's Ultra Four coming up in the future, very, very soon, I hope. And I've <laughs> broken a rally car. So perfect. Oh that, is, <laughs> that is on topic. <laughs> um we're always socially distanced we did it before it was mandated uh i'm still in the midwest russ is in the northeast tonight international show brian's in canada that's mm-hmm. right which is toronto area uh midtown toronto so if you look at a map of toronto i'm right in the dead center of the city so it takes me a really long time to escape <laughs> so talking everywhere. about bug out mobiles for you probably isn't very helpful because you're literally just stuck no matter <sighs> well I, I, tr- I try to get out as often as i can though <laughs> Aren't there, I vaguely remember reading this somewhere, some crazy speeding rules in Toronto, like in the city limits? Uh, yeah, well, everywhere in the province. So, so 30 miles an hour, yeah, 30 miles an hour over anywhere, you get your, your, your car taken from you for 10 days and you lose your license for 10 days. 10 days? That's, that's heavy. <laughs> I, can, I can hear people going, I can handle 10 days. Yeah. Well, then there are some other considerations because if yeah. you're whatever you're convicted with after you go to court yeah. might have an impact on your ability to secure insurance for your that, automobile. That 10 days gets li- <laughs> like they're residual costs. That's what we'll. Yeah. A residual cost. <laughs> oh, that's good. That is so like- off road news. There is four wheel drive news this week. Would- yeah. So the, the the 392 powered Wrangler is expensive. <laughs> Grand surprise. Is it though? Yeah, it's not inexpensive. I I mean, I I did see like I mean, automotive Twitter when the pricing came out was like, oh my god! Like, what'd you think it was gonna be, guys? They shoved the 392 yeah. into a rank like they were art like Wranglers are already expensive. Oh, that you know what? That's absolutely true. I mean, especially when you know you you get into the 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 Rubicon with all kinds of stuff. They're super spendy, and then of course they they throw the big Hemi in it. Of course they're they're gonna they're gonna get those prices too. That's the best part. They're gonna get those prices. Mm-hmm. I think our our running joke that we had Ross when the three ninety two like concept came out, we were like, are we that far away from the hundred thousand dollar Wrangler? So I optioned one on the configurator to eighty three. Was that every like yeah, almost? I mean, you know, I didn't go back through and like change the paint color or anything, but that was without really trying. I think the the one that I had over last summer was like fifty nine though, and that was with the turbo four. Okay. So, I mean, fifteen grand for three times the engine is can we're, we're, kind of makes sense. We're literally like two to three years away from a hundred thousand dollar Wrangler from from the factory, I guess I should say. If well, the 392 ends up in the Gladiator, it'll be 90. <laughs> oh, there's no question about that. And don't forget, they still haven't put the Hellcat motor in right. the GPN. <laughs> True. Just that, the, was it the trail cat concept? Yeah. They're still that, trying to find lawyers who would underwrite that to actually be released. So, <laughs> was, was the trail cat ever an actual concept or is that just something that made its way into Forza? I think that was a running driving vehicle. I think they had that at the Easter Jeep Safari. Yeah, the, I think I think it something appeared there as well. I drove a bunch of those concepts, but but the the, the Hellcat powered one wasn't wasn't there when I drove it. Okay, that was the green one, right? Yeah, it was yeah. Like stressed I'm, wheelbase. I'm literally seconds away from throwing a picture up on the screen. <laughs> so speaking of hundred thousand dollar V8 four by fours. V8 Defender launched, supercharged V8, and it's $98,000 to get in the door, which, I mean, I could think of a worse way to spend 100 grand, but, I mean, that's, it's like 
you know, it's a baby SVR. So, and you know, I, I just had the 110 um, three weeks ago and mm-hmm. I love the motor. That was one of the highlights. Like, why, why do you need what, you know, why do you need a V8? Which motor? The, I, I mean, we, I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but we only get the, the six cylinder. Oh, really? I think we yes. have a turbo four available four, here. I think is available. Yeah. As like the base base motor. Okay. No, we, so. we only get the six cylinder and, and you know, our product planning is a little bit whack here in Canada too. So <laughs> speaking of the Defender that you drove, because you had posted that it was a weird spec. And the more I looked at it, the stranger it got, it was like, <laughs> it looked really high options with like small wheels. Yeah. What was, was that? Bad. It was bad. I have no, so, you know, I'd put in a request that I wanted something that I could take off road. So that clearly got ignored. So what I got, <laughs> what I got was, was um, that right there, which, which had almost everything and it had the Explorer pack. So, you know, had the, the snorkel and the, and the roof uh, rack and the box and the side and it came, it rolled on all season Michelin time. <laughs> exactly what you want for off-roading. <laughs> hey, the best off-roader is the one that you don't really care about. That's true. true. That is I, true. I can how, do a lot with those tires. <laughs> how loud is that roof rack on the highway? It was, it was horrible. It was, <laughs> it was, it was brutal. And then of course, when you're zipping around town, like I'm doing and you know, you pick up the throttle. Well, all you get is intake noise from the snorkel that's right here. You can actually hear the snorkel? Yes, absolutely. I had a full safari snorkel on my first fourth gen forerunner. Yeah. I couldn't hear it at all. Right. It was, it was great. It, it, you got intake noise from under the hood, but like the fucking thing was like this big, you know, and yep. you didn't hear anything from up top except the wind noise. So I don't know. <laughs> I appreciate that they're doing that, but you know, if it's got all the off-road options, maybe deliver it with not highway tires. Well, this is the thing. And then, and then of course, uh, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna name names, but when I, and, and here in Canada, keep in mind, keep in mind our, our rules are different here. And you guys may know that I spent a lot of time in your country. Mm-hmm. Uh, but here with press cars, we have to go and pick them up and, and then, and then return them to the same place. So they're okay. not, they're not delivered and they're not picked up. So when I drop that one off, I rolled in the spot next to me was filled with the other, Toronto Defender Press Unit, which had proper tires that was being driven by somebody <laughs> who has the tiniest, tiniest audience. Uh, so I'm like, all right, well, uh, you know. Is that luck of the draw or just like got snubbed? I, here in Canada, who knows? Like, whatever. <laughs> who knows? Fair. Yes, who knows? That's fair. But it was good. Everybody that's been on the show that's driven and been around Defender is like, um, what, how? Well, what did they do? It's amazing. It's, it was excellent. Loved it. Absolutely loved it. Put put um, a decent amount of time in it, some some good miles on it. Obviously, it didn't take it off road, just made fun of the fact that it was a mall spec with the roof rack and the other bits, mm-hmm. um, but loved it. It was it was fantastic. And, and you know, the, the I mean, all the complaints that I had about, you know, some of their previous product, that thing was great. And it looks mm-hmm. stunning. The details are excellent. They just did a, they did a fantastic job with it. There's very little I had to complain about. I have seen so many of them over the last two weeks because I live in Southwest Connecticut. You know, it's either no money on one side or Greenwich, which is like all the money. All of the money. (laughs) I see these things everywhere, like easily three a day. It's amazing. And yeah, my, my neighborhood's the, the same. And uh, I mean, just around the corner here, there's a, there's a, there's a, a new, infill house where they can't fit their two SUVs in their garage because they're too big. So they've got a defender <laughs> and they've got a Cullinan and they leave oh, them parked God. outside all the time. $500,000 worth of SUVs. <laughs> Holy crap. Really? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Was that, so final question on, on defender before we move on, was that air suspension or the steel coils? Oh, we only get air suspension. Really? Yep. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, I, I did my, my, you know, to camera, raise it up and drop it and all that stuff. But, <laughs> oh yeah, there, there we go. That's that's something I haven't driven. I gotta I gotta drive the that. The fact on, that it's street park. My... <laughs> yeah. yeah, that costs. I mean, even if they get it in a driveway, but not in a garage, like 
It's well, it's I mean, I it's sitting there right now. I drove I drove by it an hour and a half ago and it's still sitting there. And of course, being Toronto, I mean, I can appreciate maybe in 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 other parts of the world, they do the same thing. But in this neighborhood, um, a lot of people will put in heated driveways so that they don't have to shovel. Any snow. Yep. Yeah. Here too. Uh, we yeah. I, and if, if you have calling in money, you can <laughs> in a heated driveway. We, yes. we but, had that discussion at length about two weeks ago. <laughs> OK. All right. So it, in this case. <laughs> they, they they bought or built a house that doesn't fit their defender and they're calling it that's next you know that's coming next <laughs> who knows <laughs> or that's their summer house or winter house whichever one i don't know yeah, yeah. calling winter... buys you a nice house in some parts of the country oh yeah well there's no, yeah there's no question about that i mean my my wife and i joke because i mean here in midtown uh, Toronto, there, there's 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 a, a lot of people who do not prioritize the car, and they and they street park whatever they've got. So we see six figure cars all the time covered in snow, all the time. Amazing, <laughs> I love it. That's funny. So speaking of snow, uh, Chris has found out that his so, Sequoia. <laughs> Brian, for a little backstory, I have four kids, so I I need the seating. That's um, the first I made the first time I heard it too. <laughs> yeah. The weird four. part is, yeah, four is less stressful than three. Figure it out. We've talked to other families before. They all say the same thing. I, I don't quite understand it, but. There's no middle. No, there's two middles. <laughs> You've doubled them. <laughs> hey, so, okay. I, I, I can't vouch for any of them. Oldest, youngest, so. and there's two between them. So, uh, but so. We but previously we didn't have one that really uh, a vehicle that fit all of us. We had a Toyota Highlander. We still have the Toyota Highlander, but like we needed more cargo space. Um, yes. So la- literally, uh, I think like next in the next two weeks, we a year ago we bought a 2008 Sequoia, which is hilarious to me because when I drive it, it's a 12 year old vehicle, almost 13 year old vehicle, and everyone thinks it's brand new because it looks exactly like the like the body style right. change. And every Yukon, if you got and the, Tahoe, and Expedition, like they all, all share you need the current headlights, and it's the same and as the new one. So I, I have researched that. Um, it is possible. I have to give $2, up thousand dollars. Yeah, I have to give up my. That's three grand. I have to give up my headlight washers. I have to get what? different. Yeah, I have to give up my headlight washers, and I have to cut different pieces. And somebody makes a harness, and I can put in the LED headlights. So, but that's not what I did. Um, but. We finally, we had weeks of snow here. And, and normally we get like one or two good snows a year, maybe six inches, eight inches. Um, but with the polar vortex, it just got so cold here. And we had so much, like we, we never really have snow on the ground for long periods of time. So um, if you use the Sequoia and turn off the traction control, it does an automatic LSD in the back. Sweet. And it was a blast. <laughs> I drifted everything in a six thousand or in a five thousand pound vehicle. Um, yeah, I, and and what's okay? Most important question was your family on board. Uh, two of the boys were in. Two <laughs> of the boys were in. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I don't really do it when my wife's in the car, but when the when the boys are in the car, I definitely do it. Uh, and if my youngest was in too, I'd do it with her. Um, forever ago, I had a Fiat five hundred of Barth for a week. Um, and my, so my two older boys at the time were still in like car seats and it snowed and I was dropping off at daycare and we hit a vacant lot with snow in it. And I did handbrake turns for 10 minutes before I dropped them off <laughs> at daycare. <laughs> and then every, that's also the same car where my second son, I was like, something's wrong with this car. He was sitting behind me mimicking the engine noise from the, the Abarth. And I thought it was the car breaking down, but it literally was my kid just going, eh, eh, eh. <laughs> I was like, okay. So good sound in car though. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, yeah it's a lot of fun. Except when you realize that the pedals are the this way and the steering's over here, like it's and the, yeah, and like the it, seats up here. Yeah, and the seat yeah. the seats cockeyed too. Like the Same seat also GM points left. Vehicles. But yeah. Uh 800, so, 900, and 700 GMT trucks, all the same thing. Steering yeah. wheels like who three ruined that for us further to the right than it should be. Oh, Sean, Sean did. Sean ruined that for us. John, no, I knew about it because well, I owned you, a bunch of them. John, <laughs> Sean Holman alerted me to that yeah. fact. Uh, the steering wheels are yeah, off. crooked. Off. So, um, but so since I've had the Sequoia, 
uh, I have tried to buy a cargo box three different times and have it shipped to my house. And all three, two times it arrived broken, one time it never arrived. But today I have rectified this. <laughs> I finally I like have a cargo carrier on top. I found one physically in town and then went and purchased it. So I finally have a cargo That's carrier. Awesome. It's it's kind of a, a letdown. <laughs> like I just got a cargo box. It's not that big a deal, but it took me God, <laughs> almost last, a year. Last middle of last May is when I started ordering these. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, <laughs> that's not how that process right should now. go. Yeah. So I don't have I posted a picture of the new wheels on the podcast? Maybe. I put tundra wheels on it too, but I, <laughs> but mm-hmm. I just I don't know if I told anybody about that. So what's next? Because there's always something next. Um, Don't say $3,000 headlights. Trips. <laughs> trips. 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 Um, that's, I think that's our, like, we're, we're, I would say a number of us in town are like weather watching. Like how bad's it going to get in the next couple of weeks? Like, cause March is the break for all of the families. Cause basketball just got done and baseball mm-hmm. starts in April for little league stuff. So like, and spring breaks in the middle of that. So like, March weekends are kind of like the only the last of the free weekends until you get to second week of July. Oof. That's a long stretch <laughs> for kids, yeah. especially. You, you remember a couple yeah. weeks ago when you sent me that uh text about how your week was and I sent back oh god yeah. that's my every week. <laughs> I know <laughs> it's yes. coming, Ross. It's your future. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been told. <laughs> uh, all right, that's all so, I got. It's so Dumb shit. in terms of my little forerunner so brian to fill you in on this i bought chris's old forerunner he had a 2005 uh, forerunner the v8 and it was yeah. like this is my third forerunner this is the first one i've had with a v8 so i was like okay have to um finally got decent tires for it picked up a set of nitto terra grappler g2s went up a size they fit no problem no rubbing or anything they have maybe five thousand miles on them i paid 200 bucks for a set so nice not bad yep not bad they i didn't realize they were load rage e until i was mounting them so that's fine at least there's you know hopefully some stronger duty to it then i had the truck on the lift to do an alignment at work with the help of one of my friends and we realized that the transfer case is leaking from the back oh no so what i yeah that I'll, uh, I I won't send you a picture, but it's like just enough of a leak that I need to keep an eye on it for the next few days. And if it's really bad, I have three options. Option one is reseal the back of the, of the case, which is fine. Um, kind of a pain in the ass because, you know, the drive shaft needs to come out anyways, and I need to replace the drive shaft anyways, because it, all the grease has evacuated itself. So that's option one. Option two is get a new transfer, well, new transfer, quote unquote, from like LKQ. Yeah. Like a $300 transfer case out of something with a hundred thousand miles instead of 270. That's like 300 bucks. And I'll pick up another, you know, decent drive shaft in the process, 500 bucks done. Option three is the option I really want to do, but I don't know if it's possible because (laughs) Sam and I are thinking about taking a road trip the first week of April to Florida because she wants to see her best friend who she hasn't seen in about a year. I need to get the fuck out of Connecticut for a little while. Uh, and it, our birthdays bookend that week and our wedding anniversary is in the middle. So we're thinking about doing a road trip because she works in a hospital. So she doesn't want to fly. So it comes down to, we have three cars. None of them are good options to drive to Florida right now <laughs> because the Miata has, it's the Miata, you know, we can drive to Florida, but not perfect. Uh, her car, her CX-5 is a lease. So we can't really put the miles on that. Oh, and, I was just saying, yeah. wait a minute. One of them's perfect. What are you it's talking Elise. about? <laughs> She's really close on the miles. Okay. Like the miles to like within 500 for the year. Jeez. And then, and then there's leaking transfer case. So <laughs> I will probably have to make a decision on that in the next. In the, the full-time four four-wheel drive vehicle. Like, the full-time four-wheel drive vehicle. Yeah. So that, yeah. that's the great thing. So option three is you put an FJ Cruiser transfer case in which allows you to go two wheel drive instead of full-time four wheel drive, which obviously less wear and tear on everything in the front, better Mm -hmm. gas mileage. And then you can also slide the thing instead of just have it, you know, full-time. 
Problem is when you put the FJ Cruiser transfer case in, you need to have custom drive shaft made for the back because it's a different length. It's yeah. off by like one and three quarters inches. And that's substantial in terms it of also, drive shafts. Yeah, it's not nothing. Um, <laughs> and also it, it changes over from the dial control yeah. to a manual lever and you have to cut a hole in the floor. Yes, so, where's the lever go? It actually, believe it or not, it comes up right next to the shifter. So really? there's that cup holder with the flip lid just to the left of it. And yeah. you basically just take like a router and box that out and the shift lever comes right up and you put a little dynamat around it and that's it and it's done. And I'm saying it like it's no big deal. And it's probably something that's going to take me the better part of a month to do. So <laughs> I've, I've got so, probably yeah. not the exact image that you're thinking of, but like a, for visual representation. So that's a twin stick conversion. So yeah. you can, the FJ cruiser transfer case came with a single stick, Okay, but you can change it to a twin stick and it, it just, you know, it does the same thing, but looks cooler. Looks uh, like somebody's got one so in a cup holder. Cup it's holders a process. is where I'm seeing them a and lot. Yeah, it's a pro. I, I don't know if um if, if uh, I don't know. <laughs> so needless to say, there's there's some <laughs> things that I have to work Dude, out on the re, truck. Reman unit and keep going. Yeah, <sighs> yeah, probably. I kind of agree. I it's want probably you to the use easiest it. option. <laughs> I mean, two wheel drive is much better for street use than full time four wheel drive. I mean, you're you know? not wrong. But also, like, you're getting to the age of knowing that a project car is always a project car. Like, using it is way better. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm thinking like, I haven't. I have. I bought a quad, January of 2020. I haven't changed the oil on it. <laughs> you know. Sounds like, like my lawnmower. Uh, <laughs> a lawnmower will run in spite of you. A quad will eventually tell you to fuck off. <laughs> Plus, it's a Honda so, lawnmower. Like, I have to actively try to hurt it. <laughs> yeah, this is a Polaris. It uh, on a good day barely cooperates. So, <laughs> so that's the that's the updates in uh, in Forerunner Land. And I think I decided on which lift kit I'm going to do, but I need to iron out these <laughs> things first. So, so is that why you moving, asked me what's next? Like you're like I have <sighs> giant lists. I have giant list, and I made a spreadsheet for it, and it's it's not pretty. <laughs> I got I got wheels, tires, and a cargo box, and now all I want to do is just drive it around. <laughs> Yeah, I nothing wrong with that. Yeah, I had I had skid plates lined up and it fell through. The guy was super sketchy and just bailed, and was like, "Oh, I, I looked in my shed and some of the stuff wasn't there that I thought was there." What? So, yeah, and uh, the other thing that I'm working on trying to figure out is there's a pretty bad exhaust tick. The manifolds crack. All of them do it. So the OEM replacement headers or exhaust manifolds are like fourteen hundred bucks and good headers short tubes are like 600 so <laughs> i know I, all i need is time and money <laughs> so is that it's like plus 15 horsepower right it's it's like 20 roughly okay. and then if you do an exhaust it's another ton. so and it'll sound great too I, it's and eventually a, you won't have a lease payment VA, anymore so. uh, we still have two years left on that lease i Ugh. Ugh. Anyways, let's talk about Brian and what Brian's been up to. <laughs> Enough about your woes then. <laughs> yeah, and this is on top of all the other nonsense. So anyway, so so Brian, I think you and I first met at, at the New York Auto Show. I don't know how many years ago. Oh yeah, no kidding. Um, it was, I was, <laughs> I just remember I was with Camille and we kept going over the micro crash, which you probably don't want to relive ever again, but so yeah, that would have been that would have been the you know the big one. We did like twenty five million media impressions globally on that one, um, and the, the 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 micro crash that is most relevant to me is my last micro race when I got taken out. Mm -hmm. So two two different things, but that the 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 one that we were talking about was pretty. It was I mean, it shouldn't have happened. Everybody's kind of seen it. Um, the footage tells the story. It it, it really does. Um, and I shouldn't have been in that event. I was, I was planning, all I was planning on doing was going to the race, picking up the car, bringing it back to Toronto. And, you know, the promoter wanted bigger car counts 
And I'm like, I'm like, I don't have, I don't have rain tires. I don't have radios yet. I don't have a transponder for the car yet. Um, I don't have data in the car. Like I'm not going to be competitive. Like it's nothing's going to happen here. It's just going to be, uh, it's just going to be disaster. And then, you know, he, he, he made me a sweetheart deal. So I stuck around for the weekend <laughs> qualified so poorly. And then, uh, and then ended up in the middle of that. So there, uh, I mean, sure, you both have seen the footage. There was one crash at the front of the field. I was so far back. Oh, that's that's the this is the latest one. So <laughs> this is, the this latest. is why. Yeah, this is the the later one. Um, so the 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 one we're talking about had had two crashes. One at the front of the field. One just in front of me. Part of which they they like to think I caused, but I really didn't. Um, so whatever, um, you know, uh, I, I, I bump drafted somebody who ultimately ended up in the crash, but I mean, we're, I mean, we're talking like five seconds between the bump draft and him sort of <laughs> getting involved in the crash. <laughs> so, I mean, that wasn't, that wasn't my fault. So whatever. Um, but, uh, it, it's like a scene out of, out of a Michael Bay film with cars like rolling and spinning and crash, like just There's all kinds of stuff. It's one of those things where every time you watch it, you unpack something else. Like, yeah. oh, I didn't see that guy before. Oh yeah, no, there's there's car, there's cars off. There's two like two cars off to the right, barrel rolling, and it's just what? it's <laughs> remarkable. Yeah. So, that so that one. that photo, that photo. In lo long story short, first race of the season, lap two, I'm in like fourth or something. Like we're at the front of the field. There's like 25 cars behind us. And the guy behind me decides to use me as a brake in a, in a heavy, um, heavy braking corner and turns me. Um, I ended up in the earth launched in the air. And then the, oh, that gosh. photo of the underside of the car the is, big one. is the middle of the wreck. Mm -hmm. well, um, you and get and really I don't great, recommend it. You get a really great look at the underside of a micro. Like, I mean, you can yeah. see it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's right um, you can, so you can see the, the, <laughs> yeah well probably i mean their mm. micros are made in mexico so i don't i don't think they're that well made but, um the uh the the safety equipment though was like pretty much spot on we you know we had good cages good seats it is um, harness hans device all that stuff and it's cool and, to see uh, the cage plates from the bottom of the car it's just bad that someone's yeah. in it <laughs> yeah that's that's me in the middle of that wreck exactly. right right there and so here's the best part. And I think many, many of us, and I think the three of us on this call will appreciate this fact. Uh, someone had posted a photo, not that photo, but a photo of me clearly involved in this wreck on Facebook with me tagged in it before I could call my wife. Oh no. Oh, and did she see it or did no, this? No, oh. thankfully not. <laughs> that would have been a whole other story. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, would, that would have been really bad, but Jesus. um yeah, it was that was that was um, that was. I mean, all the wrecks I've had are really like all the you know whatever, they're all bad because mm -hmm. I mean the the minor ones you don't remember and and the big ones you you do and um, I've got a lingering shoulder problem as a result of that wreck. Really? Yeah. So you alluded to something earlier in which you may have also crashed an off road rally car. Yeah. Well, I didn't. Uh... I didn't crash it. I I, I technically broke it. Broke. Okay, broke. <laughs> Which if, if you break it without crashing it, I mean, you were driving it hard enough. So. Uh, well, the funny thing was that, that I wasn't. So um, <laughs> year, years ago, years ago, we, um, it was part of a, uh, a big automotive outlet and we had massive budgets to do all kinds of stuff. So um, prefacing this, I had gone to the States to get a Raptor press unit. This is when the 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 first Raptors came out. So this would have been okay. a, like the 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 smaller displacement. The um, five five four four five, yeah. four sounds right. Yeah, yeah. So it would have been the five four um, short cab, mm -hmm. and you know there were no press units in Canada. So I'm like, I'll go over and I'll take my luck of the draw when I when I cross the border. But th so there's there's a there's a there's a law in Canada. It's on the books. Um, I think for, for like drug smuggling or, or like a, a you know, a, a counter drug enforcement thing and Canadians can't drive a U.S. plated vehicle. Yeah. Something, something Canadians like that. Canadians can't drive a U.S. What? Yeah. 
Uh, so it's it and and the local police don't enforce it the provincial police don't enforce it but there's law in the books um so and and on top of that i mean you know some some sketchy random dude crossing the border into canada with a brand new truck from ford that's owned by ford like this none of this makes sense but i brought all the paperwork and i i i managed to to get it into the country so we had that at the shoot we had um uh a lancer uh evo um there as well we were at a rally cross course and then someone brought out their route their the their lancer like evo eight maybe i'd say okay and we'd paid for it to be there and it was a full-blown rally car like it was a proper rally car so there you know my job was to make it slide and 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 jump it and all this stuff and literally the the, the second time i drove it as i'm lining up a simple jump the 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 drivetrain just goes <laughs> like so it pulled in the, 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 the yeah, yeah as evos do yeah so yeah so you know something like that in in that kind of environment and uh something broke and uh you know the i mean we we paid for it to be there and you know obviously everything was insured and all that but the owner was quite upset because i think he was going to use it like the next weekend or something and so oh, for a race event. oh no yes. <laughs> Yes, that sucks. You, you did well, make a fee I mean, off this, sir. Oh, he he got paid very well for that. Yeah. And I mean, as, as someone who's who's owned race cars and and understands all of the the financial considerations, he did very well. So, I mean, he got out okay. Yeah, he did. He did just fine. And realistically, it's an Evo rally car. Like it was going to happen at some point, whether it was you sitting in the driver's seat or him. I mean, that, that could have been just one day to the next. For, you know, from from my standpoint, I mean, I wasn't I wasn't abusing the car at all, mm-hmm. and he would have he would have had the same issue uh, because it was happened it happened under moderate power, so something would have blown up while he was, you know, warming up or whatever, and you know, I probably saved him a, a big headache. <laughs> really frustrating trip to a parking lot. That's and right. He got paid. <laughs> yes. So you've uh, the editor notes that you also ran Lucas Off Road. Yes, I did. Which vehicles did you drive for vehicle? So those were the rotary powered super lights. I don't even know if I rotary. <laughs> if I know yeah. what that is. Yes. So they're like RX eight <laughs> powered. Um, what? Yeah, they were and 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 like mid engine. They were awesome. I mean, that sounds fun. Mm-hmm. This, this it, one yeah. happens to have a lady in the image that I'm finding, but like I'm I'm really searching for super lights. This is not Brian in the image. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's the truck good okay. <laughs> that's, the truck is what i was aiming at the lady was just she was yes. in the way <laughs> yeah yeah that so rotary that that's one yes. of the strangest things i've heard mid engine rotary like i don't know 16 or 18 inches of suspension travel and and obviously that's the short course stuff mm-hmm. um which i i mean i just loved you know i you know got invited to go drive these things was was down for LA Auto Show and they're like, hey, we're gonna, you know, um, we'll do this test around LA Auto Show. I'm great, I'll be there. No, no worries. I'll I'll come out and drive it. Of course, they have rain just after LA Auto Show that particular year. Awesome. And scrub the test. And you know, the the team's like, you know, with your racing background, don't worry about it. You'll do fine. And and all that. And I've ne- I mean, I've just done road racing. That mm-hmm. that's and and BMX. BMX doesn't count either. But um, the the first practice session in that super lights, fit, like I don't know how I made it, but um, after it was done off the track, it was a, like I've never had this, but I almost vomited. <laughs> really? <laughs> Holy shit! Oh man, that that is that is the toughest fo- off road stuff is the toughest form of racing i've ever experienced and hmm. and when i hear road racers complain about how hard and how hot it is in their car i just laugh I'm like you have no idea you didn't jump at all guys calm down yeah, exactly <laughs> you kept all and four on the ground it, that's right uh, usually well in the, in the micro I'd, you know i'd always uh, have two wheels in the air but that's another story yeah, exceptions. <laughs> um, but in in that super light uh that was the first time i learned to shift in the air <laughs> what, okay so i was actually gonna ask what gearbox is it a sequential or is it just a no it was an h pattern okay. i think it was like a four speed thing though that's that's them yeah they're that, not long right at all no oh no no 
And that can't be more than like 3,000 or 3,500 pounds, right? Yeah, there was, I mean, it was just a tube frame and, it, and, and shell. Yeah. Yeah. That is yeah. not the noise I would expect to hear from those things, though. You can kind of like see where things are at. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Um, it was, it was, you know, I'm like, why don't you guys use Hans devices? And then I understood why huh. they don't use Hans devices. Because <laughs> they need Jesus. to be able to look around more. <laughs> Well, now they, the, you have to, I mean, with those, you got to do the, 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 the system that straps to your torso and all that. Right. And, mm. and uh, you know, thankfully I had a bunch of helmets in, you know, that, that, I mean, I still have that particular helmet, but it had a, it had an air inlet at the top and um, you know, it was a nice lightweight bell and I got some tear offs for it and it was just perfect, but I had to change the, the, you know, the Hans, I can't remember what the heck I did with the Hans post. I had to change them so that they would adapt to the, to the different uh, head restraint system. Hmm. But um, it was, it was the toughest, toughest form of racing I've done. And I, you know, the coolest part is that there are shots of me crossing the start finish line, like eight or nine feet in the air. Oh my God. <laughs> How'd that feel the first time? <laughs> Uh, the first time was was kind of <laughs> kind of shit because I came up short on landing, oh, so I, I landed oh. on the flat. But once Your once I just bounces. Uh, oh. oh yeah, so once I once I figured it out, I was able to catch the landings on on most of these things. The toughest part was because I you know I'm, I'm a I'm a road racer by um, by experience and the toughest part was learning to slide those things mm. because traction was different everywhere and it was always changing so learning to slide them and to, and to go quickly was was really really tough so much fun though when you get it right oh, oh yes <laughs> yeah i it, yeah if i got invited to do it again I'd, i would totally go um you know it's it's one of those things where you know, road racing comes first and I'm not going to pursue. Uh, and, and on top of that, there's no short course racing in this part of the world. So it just make mm. it exceptionally difficult for me. Uh, but, um, you know. Wisconsin is not that far away. I mean, it's fairly far away. There's a bunch of lakes in between you and it, but champ off road yeah, or championship off road is Wisconsin, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. Um, God, what else? It, it probably takes me the same amount of fly, time to fly to Milwaukee <laughs> as it does like Austin. Oh, California. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be a Toronto to Milwaukee direct flight. There's got to be. There, oh, there is. I've, I've taken it. I've raced at, raced at Road America. I've done oh, yeah, it a couple yeah, yeah. times. Yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm a member of the Midwest Auto Writers Group. And I've never yep. raced, uh, driven at Road America, and it was supposed to be in the spring. It was supposed to be in the fall. It's now pushed all uh, the way until fall twenty one. I'm like, someday I will drive uh, around in Elkhart Lake. <laughs> well, you gotta go. It it's one of those proper road courses. I mean, I, that's 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 one of my top circuits in in this part of the world. It's so good. Mm-hmm. We one of our yeah, uh, co writers is based in Milwaukee, so I'm. I'm gonna go bug Robbie a bunch and stay there. <laughs> yeah, we can find an excuse to bother him when he's not off in the woods or something. <laughs> Always seems to be doing that. I might, I might go to the so, woods too. <laughs> yeah, no fair. I mean, might as well. But so, Brian, just in going through your Instagram feed, you've spent some like seems a decent amount of time in all the modern, you know, the current offerings. So, yeah, we discussed Defender. Uh, but I mean, where do you want to start? You've done Gladiator, you've done Wrangler Rubicon, uh, Tacoma and Forerunner TRD Pro. Yep. Uh, I saw something about a Honda Talon, which yes. I mean, I'm, you know, ATVs and side-by-sides are my but primary. Let's go Talon. I've got to yeah, dig. Let's start there. because I'm digging I know in Instagram now to find it. Glucker spent some time in it and came away and was like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's what he said. So we only get one spec of the, of the talent here. So we don't get, we don't get the one with the super fancy dampers. Mm-hmm. So we just get the, the, the straight up 1000 X. Um, and uh, mine had nothing on it, not even a winch, uh, which I could have used in the middle of the day. Cause you know, we managed to get it stuck, but um <laughs> You know, I've got I've got a limited amount of experience in side by sides, but you know a little bit, and I I kind of dig the talent. Like, they're fun, it, right? Yeah, it was it was super fun, and I like I mean I like that gearbox. I like the dual clutch because you can hold the gear and and all that, and I just I dig uh, that. 
I am most eager to try the Talon primarily for the gearbox because mm-hmm. all of the other ones are CVTs and they are, I mean, they do their job and throw a belt, shred a belt at some point, but yep. they're just dreadful. Oh, CVT is the worst. But <laughs> the ta- everybody, everybody that drives a Talon, and I mean, Honda was doing that with their ATVs back in the mid 2000s too. They would put like an actual gearbox in it instead of just yep. a band. So yes. where did you drive it? Uh, I took it uh, about an hour and a half north of Toronto to, I mean, so tri- got to keep in mind, I don't know what things are like where you guys are in Southern California, no problem getting to trails here in my province. It's so difficult. Like these, the, like this kind of public use of lands for these purposes <laughs> just doesn't exist unless you're into snowmobiling at this time of year. So, you know, what we're kind of left with is some of those snowmobile trails for, you know, side-by-sides or, or, or ATVs in general. So mm-hmm. thankfully I know where some of those spots are and, and, you know, we, we took the, the talent up there and, you know, it was, it was perfect when we got there and it was filthy when we were done. It was, you know, it was, it was perfect. It, it probably took me two hours to power wash it. Afterwards. Oh God. Yeah, it always takes longer than you think it's going to take to wash it. You look at me, oh, this isn't that bad. And then there's just shit everywhere without fail. <laughs> oh, I know. And, you know, it was on the roof. It was underneath the roof. It was, mm-hmm. it was underneath everywhere. The, <laughs> the best yeah. is when you start pulling the seats out and you realize that not only did it land on the roof, but at some point on the trip home, it dropped onto the seat and behind the seats. Yeah. Oh, God. oh it's, yeah. It's always a mess. Yeah, and, and I pulled it with uh, with the ridge line as well. Okay. So of course the ridge line because we were sitting in the my my friend Derek and I were sitting in the front seats. Uh, those were filthy too. So mm-hmm. thankfully I'm a, I'm a member of a, a car club that's not too far away. It's called our club. It's pretty awesome actually. And uh, we you know we've got a car wash bay and all that stuff. But you know the first thing I had to do was clean the talon before I took it back. There's no way I was going to take it back that filthy. <laughs> you feel so bad. Yeah. That would have been bad form. And then of course I had to clean the ridge line as well. Yep. Um, but the ta- the talon I, re- I really like. We had a- we had such a great time with it. We kind of got to go everywhere we wanted. Um, got it seriously stuck, mm-hmm. but that was that was pilot error. Me being the pilot in that. <laughs> um, and uh, learn by doing. Uh, it's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I learned a lot there. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, I I really I really enjoyed um, I really enjoyed the 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 talon over over um, the other whatever two side by sides I've driven. Okay. Uh, really liked it and i'm you know i'm also biased so straight up i'm biased so um uh i've owned and raced hondas for years so i've the the bias is clear and apparent Mm -hmm. okay well at least you're honest and fair about it (laughs) you're not hiding it (laughs) no No, i'm i'm very curious to try the the talent but rule number one if you go again sometime in the future rule number one for side-by-sides and atvs is bring a change of clothes (laughs) <laughs> oh, yes. yeah oh yeah and i think yeah. this was this would have been the first weekend of november so Ooh, mud season oh it really was and mm-hmm. you know um you know we we still were we were dressed appropriately but it was bad news it was mm-hmm. so bad it's so much fun though so was it as much fun more fun or less fun than the v8 nd miata uh, it was definitely less fun. That 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 NDV8 Miata is one of those things that I will never forget. It and it's its own unique thing. Um, they, they you know it's all Camaro bit, so it's it's Camaro engine, Camaro transmission, Camaro diff, and then they do all their magic to it. And that thing, it's unlike anything else. It's not a Miata. It's certainly not a Camaro. It's not a Corvette. It's its own distinct thing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it's a, it's really expensive. It's basically an ND plus 50 Nachi. grand yeah, to do it right. Um, but what a car. Is it, this is the way I'm envisioning it because I've driven plenty of NDs and I own an NC and then I've, you know, driven plenty of cars with the LS3 and the LS2 and the LS1. Yep. Is it like, does it almost have that kind of Cobra vibe to it where it's like, there's a bunch of stuff jumbled together, but it, it, it's just, it's none of those. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's a, it's really, I mean, the, and they did a lot of work developing it. It's a cohesive package. 
Oh, that's my recent uh, RF tester. So I'd, <laughs> oh, I'd book that. That's that metal color. That's weird. Yes, that's right. It's so good. I, I'd book that for the first week of January or something like that. Because I was thinking, okay, I'm going to be a smart, you know, a smart mother trucker and drive this in the winter. As you can see, there's snow on the ground, but we didn't get a lick of precipitation in the seven days that I drove it. So the roads are <laughs> clear the entire time. Fortunate. That's too bad because I can tell you those cars on snow tires is the fucking best. Exactly. Exactly. So I, I got nothing. I got, a, I got a little bit of ice when I was up north of oh, the city um, testing it. But that, that V8 is, is a, a special car. I mean, that's the, that's the kind of car that in, you know, 15 or 20 years is going to bring a bazillion dollars on bring a trailer. Think They're so? so. It's so good. It's uh, so many- good. They they're just building them to order, right? They didn't say they're going to make like fifty of them and call no. it. No, um, and and I and I think because they're so expensive that that very few people are doing them because it's, you know it's easy to 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 do other things, but I mean that that car had you know just great balance, great poise. The chassis was right, the brakes were right, like it just mm-hmm. it was a cohesive thing. And I wasn't I was being I was a little skeptical. It was. Um, the magazine I write for in Australia, they, you know, I get, I get this, I get this email one day. Hey, mate, can you, can you go drive that ND Miata? I'm like, all right, sure. Let's do that. And uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I turned it into a snowboarding trip because they're, they're in, in Colorado. So it, it all worked out wonderfully, but um, the car so good. It's so good. Well, I'll be either selling organs or buying raffle tickets, you know, lottery tickets. You need to find me. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's like, that's like the, the pinnacle of what I'd aim to get, you know, at some point, but so what else? So you've spent, I mean, we're clearly a Toyota podcast here. You know, I've had a bunch of forerunners. Chris is, I mean, basically a Toyota household for the last, what, five years. Um, yeah. So you spent time in the TRD five years, pros. That's it. That's it. How, <laughs> no. how, 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 when, when was your last non Toyota? The Yukon XL. Actually, I think you're right. It's been five years. So that was, we, that was, that was our last there. GM. Because I think we've been in we've been in this house for six years, and it it the G or the Yukon XL was here. That's mm-hmm. how I knew I'd be able to fit the Sequoia in the garage. I was like, well, I had a Yukon XL in the garage. I'll be piece of cake. <laughs> Way shorter. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. So then uh, so so Chris and I are clearly in the not so new <laughs> side of Toyota things. Brian, right. how? How did you find the TRD Pros? Because there's been some very mixed things being said about them lately. Yeah, so I've got I've got very specific criticisms um, of those. So in uh, last summer, um, uh, I tested the Forerunner TRD Pro, which to me is like, and we have one at the club as well, but. Um, I got oh, that, that, that's, <laughs> that's another story. So that's, that's, that's a taco. That's, that's on I top know, of I a just... mountain in Southern California. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm I, I'll, I'll tell you what that is. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the, the forerunner though, like uh, to me, here's the thing. I spent time in that 110 Defender and I'm like, but I really could, I could, I could love a forerunner TRD Pro with a supercharger on it instead of a defender 110 i could really <laughs> love that and live with it i thought it was a, a just a wonderful package yeah that's except for the engine ex, well ex, it's mostly the trans it's mostly the transmission yeah it really is yeah i owned a fifth gen i had a 2018 for like nine months uh, and yep. sold it for more than i paid for it which nice. is wild yep. uh, the transmission just it never knew what it was doing no and you know the same. I mean, the, the taco was pretty much the same, but uh, that thing, I just, I loved that. I loved that truck, and um, in in every way except for that that little bit of of drivetrain miscalibration and lack of power and torque. So you know, I understand. You know, there's superchargers available. I I would figure out which one's the best one, put it on, uh, put it you know, maybe a different head unit in that thing, uh, just because, mm-hmm. and, um, and be very, very happy. I think it's, it's such a great truck. I think that that's what a lot of people are doing. I mean, the sales of the forerunners have increased year over year for like the last 10 years. And I yeah. think a lot of that is people who have like Range Rover money, but 
don't want the you know the stigma or the the idea of the issues that come with it the douche factor so your words <laughs> <laughs> yeah we'll go with that i, don't but, I mean hey no to my friends who sell range rovers dude there's also <laughs> a huge douche factor with the fifth gen forerunner people there is they're, they're, oh i'm, I'm sure they're there very is. different oh, no. they're both on the spectrum oh. of it but they're very different types it's like <laughs> the new wave of instagram wannabe like influencers buy fifth gen forerunners Right. Do suspension and then take pictures of it like in a dirt parking lot, and that's it. And <laughs> oh, that's awesome! They're, they're my, probably the worst offenders of any of them. My favorite. I had a buddy with a red one, and he, you know who you are, and he did that. <laughs> like he, but like he would take Call legitimate trips. I, I met the dude on a trip. Like I love the guy's a decent human being. He swapped out for an F one fifty. When he when he stopped out the F one fifty, I was like, "But wait, what are you going to take pictures of?" It was just F one fifty after that. Like, <laughs> sure. I mean, gotta do what you got to do. But so uh, Tacoma, I mean, the the transmission and, and engine combo in Tacoma is not good either. No, I want to know so, the mountain story though. <laughs> yeah, so yes. so where I'm in, in Southern California, um, there's ma- there's trails nearby, and um, you know when when there aren't fires in Orange County, I can I can you know. Uh, drive these trails so uh but also that you know there are there's you know plenty of hills and whatever and with the, with that taco that that particular one it would you know the the transmission would hunt up as i'm going up and down hills and stuff drive me nuts but that that is that takes me 45 minutes to the trailhead to get to that spot on the top mm-hmm. of this mountain range um and and mr glucker knows exactly where that is i couldn't tell you the name of it but i just know how to get there um, and and it's a beautiful it's a beautiful view from there you can see so off to the off to the the left of that photo you can see the ocean to the right you're looking inland it's just oh, that sounds it's a amazing. beautiful spot and i've been going up there for i don't know three years now and what i generally do is i'll i'll film a portion of the episode or a whole episode there and you know going up and down and and whatever and that spot in particular is beautiful to shoot at um but then what i also do is take a nice break have a have a little um you know maybe a, a, a little bit of spring water and a nice Cuban cigar on the <laughs> on the, the tailgate of the truck, it was quiet and uh, nice. have have yeah. a little break. And you know, I I I love going up there. But yeah, the 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 talk. I got stopped so many times on that trail because I mean, you know, it's pandemic times, and mm. the trail was busy every time I went. And uh, you know, people who knew what that was being, and and the, I'm trying to remember when that was. I think that was in. I think it was in October and you know people were recognizing as the as the, the latest uh TRD Pro so like dude are you gonna sell that you can sell that for more than you paid for it I'm like <laughs> happily yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, we're, this we're one not, doesn't belong not, to me we're not doing that paid zero for um, it. <laughs> but what, what what I was able to do with that I mean because it's so just it's so competent um I was able to take my uh, my uncle who's 81 and he was racing cars before I was born, but, oh, wow. uh, but he's down there and uh, I was able to take him off-roading for the first time. Nice. So we took, we took the, the taco to, to that spot and uh, he got to see a different perspective of, uh, of Orange County, which was great. That's so cool. I mean, even at 81 to get that experience for the first time, uh, that probably like made his month that's great oh yeah i mean i mean uh so his his house is 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 the meeting point for um all my test cars when i'm down there so there are often times where there's like over a million dollars cars sitting in his driveway which he just (laughs) absolutely loves he doesn't know what to do with it he's just looking around like what (laughs) he he gets uh, he gets up he might he might take a (laughs) coffee outside and and go just look at these stupid things his nephews brought to his house that's so cool. So what else have you driven up that same, that same track? Um, there was stuff that I wanted to do, but there were, there were fires. So um, I can't remember what I had that I, I wanted to take up there. Was uh, but there were some gladiator? Was gladiator um, one of them? 
Yes, um, it was it was Gladiator Rubicon Diesel, and I couldn't take it there because there were fires. I had to I had to shoot another. I had to shoot that episode somewhere mm -hmm. else completely, and it looks great on film, but it was not a great driving experience. Um, so I, I went to the launch of Gladiator, which was off roady and and mm -hmm. and, and all that stuff. So I have driven it off road, but um, didn't haven't done it on my own. And and that was that was the the plan with with uh, Rubicon Diesel, is to yeah. So that um, yeah. So we're. I'll, I'll let you guys and your <laughs> listeners in on a little secret. When I tag stuff in Southern California, unless you recognize it, I'm lying. Mm -hmm. You don't so want like to give the up last three secret. have that, said yeah. Palm Springs. Yeah. I'm like, I'm pretty sure we're not yeah, Palm Springs. That, that ain't Palm Springs. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, and, and I really, so that, that, that episode is going to run um, shortly, but uh, I really dug the, the diesel in that, but it's just expensive. It's yeah. well, what was that one like right around 60, maybe 65? Uh, I, can I can tell you, I've got the, I've got it on my, I've got it <laughs> literally right here. Uh, I did have it literally. Right While here. you're looking for that, I'm going to look for the one for the Wrangler that I had because I, I can't remember if it was 49 or 59, but I, I think oh, was... you're gonna, you're gonna die. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. So not including freight, 63 flat. That's a lot of dough. Yeah. yeah. And oh, it didn't sideways. have everything. Okay. It didn't have everything. So the Wrangler Rubicon I had over the summer, I'm reading this sideways because my PDF reader won't allow me to change things, was 59275, and it had the Turbo 4. <laughs> yeah. So... This is, I mean, we did not prep this in the show notes. I'm going to completely derail us. Why are cars so best. expensive? Like, and, and I know I'm not alone. And like, every time I look at a car, like they're like, I was like two years ago, I was building Suburbans and I was like, yeah, I'd love to have rear entertainment. I got to $78,000. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> why? Yeah, the, the, this. The simple answer is because they can get that money, and that that is the reality. That's what I was going to say. And um, I'll 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 uh, I'll share with uh, you gentlemen something else. Here in Canada, we are highest per capita globally. At least we were a couple of years ago for every M BMW, every AMG Mercedes, and every proper RS Audi. Because wow. they're they're not cheap. Nope. <laughs> and so nope. you guys so we every... over so we don't see those base model like BMWs, Benzes, Audis. We don't see those at all. So <laughs> like when, Mer in, when in Mercedes market. did the what was it, the CLA and they were like starting at like twenty nine nine, you guys were up there just yeah. giggling. I'm like, yeah, okay. Yeah, we'll take all the AMGs, <laughs> the forty five, yeah. please. Yeah, all all the AMGs, anything that says AMG on it with some big wheels, that's that's what they sell. Man. Is that people just financing or leasing or is there yeah. genuinely that much money up there no it, it's all financed huh hmm. interesting yeah That's i mean the, the, you know the, the higher you go uh in the market the you know the more they're paying cash but mm. but for all that stuff it's all fine it's all leased wow yeah i mean so better than the uh the joke that they did in entourage the li effect where you put the amg badges on a non-amg Exactly. <laughs> Except they're willing to pay for the AM, AMG badge. Right. I mean, yeah. that means they're uh, we can be second and third owners. Right. <laughs> or fifth uh, for some of those things. <laughs> or fifth. Yes. But I mean, you know, I, 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 you know, like we were talking about earlier, I think a ninety thousand dollar Gladiator with a Hemi is is going to be here sooner than we think. Yeah. And then that makes, I mean, Gladiator is a different a different proposition than a than a Wrangler Rubicon Unlimited. But um, you know, at those price points, the the Defender is no longer out of that realm. It's right there, and yeah. the Defender is so much more refined, so much easier to drive. And as as one of my my friends um, deliberately and specifically bought a Defender Nine, a new Defender Ninety, for this reason. Mm -hmm the crash test ratings are so much better and he's got, you know, he's got a, a, a younger family. So that is, that is a big consideration for him. And that's why he got rid of his Wrangler and he went to a defender. 
the Jeep community will be the first and happiest to post pictures of like a front or rear end collision of their Wrangler with like steel bumpers, you know, and it's got eight, eight inches of lift and has nothing to do with the actual like crash test and safety ratings. Yep. And, the, and the boasting will be, look, it survived. Nobody got hurt. Everything's fine. The other car is more damaged than mine. Ha ha ha. But the reality is side impact on a Wrangler is not good. It is no. still not yes. good. There's no side airbags. Those doors are like, you hear the sound when you close a Wrangler door. <laughs> oh yeah. It's, it doesn't sound good. Uh, but that's, that is interesting. I still haven't seen a D90 in person. They haven't made their way here yet. I don't think I, I have any. I haven't either. Yeah. I, I don't know. But if you're, if it's $98,000 for a V8 D90 and it's $80,000 for a V8 Wrangler, it make like that it's the same class. It's like 20 bucks a month. Yeah. It's the it's same class. Payment. <laughs> it's pocket right. change. <laughs> That's right. That, you know, this, 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 this Wrangler um, talk reminds me that I think the first time I had the new Wrangler um, here uh, at my home, I pulled the doors off mm -hmm. and, and threw them in my basement and, and whatever. And I headed downtown Toronto, which I mean, Toronto's, I mean, Toronto's pretty safe, but I got to my old, old neighborhood, which is, you know, still gentrifying, whatever. And I'm in the Wrangler, doors off. There is some guy in bare feet running down the middle of the street, <laughs> screaming at the top of his lungs. <laughs> Did he just really like the Wrangler? <laughs> I'm like, what am I going to do? Am I going to have to run this guy over? What am I going to have to do? <laughs> Nice little, uh, well, you, no, you can't even do the open door, open the door thing again. No, 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 I had, I had no option. <laughs> and, and of course, here in Canada, we can't have weapons. So I, you know. It makes me think of, uh, talk about new Wrangler with doors off that Sam, that's trip Sam Smith did. That was nuts. Alaska. Yeah. And they just left the doors Fucking at crazy. home Fucking for all crazy. of the trip. Yeah. I think the only automotive journalist trip that I've read that seemed more miserably cold than that was when Bowman and Roy went cross country in the Morgan. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I think the Morgan would be way more miserable than, than that, that oh, Wrangler. For a while, Bowman went like, cross country like twice a year, like for it's up was, like three or four years. Like he was like, and then he just a year. spent like a whole year doing that as is the only thing he was doing. I thought that was two years. Was it two years? I think was, so. It was, it was a long time. Odyssey. Omen Odyssey. We got to have him back on the show sometime. I'm sure he's got more stories because of, uh, of the Haggerty. And he's actually, no, he's writing for uh, UTV yeah. magazine now. So, which reminds me, his friend's coming on, Kevin Ray, to talk about UTV sometime soon. Um, so, what else can we talk about? I mean. Well, I, I should mention that I also have a column at Haggerty now. Oh, you do? Oh, nice. I, I do indeed. So uh, it, it's called like the everybody. Elsinore. Seriously. Yeah, well, this this is the thing. So I, I, I'm apparently the only one with a, a very Canadian-specific column. So okay. uh, they, then, they give me some latitude so I can talk supercars every once in a while. But it's, it's in uh, a magazine? Uh, it's, it's digital. Digital. Okay. Yeah. I mean, everything they're doing right now is good. And yes. I, I, don't, I don't say that to Between like, the YouTube you know, shows, the, like, there's been a lot of stuff. Like, dude. Oh yeah, no kidding. So you know, for me, my mandate is is to is to you know talk about Canadian specific stuff. So um, we've got a new racing circuit, but one of those private racing circuits where they're going to have villas and a and a you know industrial park and all that stuff. Um, so my story on uh, on Friday, this past Friday, was about driving the circuit on a sim. And then was able to talk to the the designers about it, and and you know it's a I mean for me who loves sims and racing and everything, it was a super cool experience. Just so I mean, just for, forget about you know writing the story and telling the story. It was a wonderful experience. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. It's so you, super easy to you, find that article. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. It also, looks like a fun track. Oh, that's it. It also like a fun track. Yeah, there's, I mean, Which it's, it's you really tough. 
um, in a couple of spots. It's not super, so my home circuits, uh, most sport, which is super fast. This is, you know, very much modern, um, technical, safe circuit. Yeah, it's, it's is it um, counterclockwise. Counterclockwise it or, is, or clockwise? It is, this one is counterclockwise. Yeah, based on runoff oh, cool. areas is what I was doing oh, there. Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so, what what they you know, I mean the couple things they've they've done is there are no ninety degree corners which is great, a um, couple of really really fast um, sections and then a couple of really tough technical sessions where where you know I mean I was frustrated trying to learn the circuit and, and you know in real life you get a different <laughs> sensation, um, but the couple of really really tough sections and one that is particularly fast so you got to be not only not only do you have to carry a ton of corner speed but you've got to be on the marks perfectly otherwise you're going to screw it up oh, so it's um it's right across the road from um a, a small international airport it's primarily cargo that goes in and out of there so getting the zoning was pretty easy for them but you know uh, being in the racing business you're always skeptical of of circuits you know you know they promise to be open and all this stuff big they're, promises they're, and then... they're moving earth um they've sold all the private villas already they've got oh. um tenants in um scheduled for the industrial park um they've got a partnership with a local university that has an automotive specific program awesome so it's Perfect. called oro oro station and um it's you know it's about an hour north of toronto it's on the way to cottage country so it kind of makes sense and it's going to be spectacular but the problem is we're not going to be driving it for another year at least yeah or how how long is the circuit uh it's two and a half miles how long oh is wow that straight That's yeah like straight looks like um, there it, forever. it's it's actually you know what it's not that long and it's got a little bit of an elevation change in the middle of it okay. so you climb a bit of a hill and you drop down before the braking zone um so it it looks like it's long i think it's uh because i was talking to um one of the designers i don't want to be a jerk and name names but uh, <laughs> or drop names but it, i mean it's in the story um but i think uh it had to be 700 meters because um, there's there's a specific uh, kind of testing that they'll use uh, for 700 meters, um, whatever mm -hmm. it is. So um, uh, I cool. think uh, there's two straights that are about 700 meters long. Oh, wow. that's, that's cool. More tracks is always better tracks. Have, have yeah. we talked about and the one that's mean, going by me? Oh, what's that? What track is that? It's going in the Ozarks. It's Ozark International Raceway, and look how tight it is. <laughs> Whoa. Um, that is sketchy. And there, there's a video. Um, the elevation change is extreme. What it's is that little yump on the, on the straight at the bottom? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> it looks like almost like a bridge. <laughs> um. Like way, like we talking about here. No, at the bottom, uh, very bottom, right, right here? there. Yes, that what probably the elevation fuck is change. That? <laughs> Just like uh, over a river through the woods. <laughs> it's Jesus. so if you've never been to the Ozark <laughs> Mountains. It's literally rolling hills forever, uh, with red dirt, and yeah, it's just constant change of Looks direction. Like they built it on the side of a mountain. It, well, they, they call like, them the Ozark Mountains, but they're they're hills. What? There's that track they built up in Massachusetts, and the name of it slipped in my mind. But they literally it's oh, it's, it's Club it like, Motorsports. Cl yes, yes, yes. <laughs> the, the, the most the, the most benign name of a racing circuit ever. They did not get any bit of creative <laughs> to get no. come up with that. No, it's a cool place though. <laughs> it looks it. I, I got to make it up there. I mean, traveling hasn't been friendly. You know? <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I so think there's there's video you, of uh, the raceway. Yeah, Somebody was, was running uh, it in a practice run. I'm trying to find it real fast. <laughs> so Brian, before we go, because we you know brushing up on time here, but yep. you drove a new studded winter tire. Yes. Okay. So my experience with studded tires is once upon a time I bought a set of winter tires from my Dodge Challenger that had studs in them and I had to take the studs out and they took me about four days. So hopefully you, hopefully your experience was better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, slightly better. So, I mean, that's, that's generally how, you know, it's done is, is, you know, the, the, you know, and, and at least here in Ontario, you can't, um, you can't run studded tires in Southern Ontario. And where I was even, 
you know, whatever it was, uh, 150 miles out of town, it's still not legal to run studded tires on the road. Really? Yeah. So what happens if you drive into town from outside those quarters? Uh, the, the first cop that hears you, you're getting ticketed. Wow. Yeah, for sure. Because uh, I mean, yeah, you, I mean, you know from experience, they're so loud. Horrible. I have yeah. a few customers that come in with them. You can hear them. Yeah, it sounds like they're driving on just like flat, total flat tires. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, you know, cops in this part of the world would certainly look out for them. Um, I still do. I still went out and drove both. Like I had a, I had a comparison tire uh, from the, the Continental that I drove. So this Continental, um, and they, they call it Ice Contact XTRM. Um, so <laughs> it's like 2004. Hey, that's exactly <laughs> it. So it's. Um, I think it's unique to the Canadian market and. Um, the reason it's interesting is it becomes, it, it, it comes pre-studded and the, the, the stud technology is actually really cool. You're not going to lose, uh, the studs as you drive the tire as you mm -hmm. normally would, because, you know, normally you, you'd put studs in, you'd have to, you know, sort of glue them in or, or whatever. And you're going to lose them eventually. Um, the way they've got this molded in the, and the specific stud that they have designed for this tire just stays there, but it's also a a better compromise than a traditional studded tire. The studs are a little bit shorter. Mm -hmm. So that means more rubbers in contact with the road when you're driving on, on in normal road conditions. But then what I found was that on ice, there was no difference between a, a traditional studded tire and this new Continental with the shorter studs. It was it was oh. just fantastic. And I mean, driving on ice, all I did all day was, was drive sideways. That's <laughs> the best. What are you going to do? As right. one does. So... <laughs> So the purpose of this is just to be a less compromised studded tire, not to take over the realm of a non-studded tire, right? Yeah, absolutely. They've okay. got a non-studded version um, that I'd like to try at some point, but the, uh, the studded version, this, this studded tire specifically seems to me to be a, you know, a, a better balance between a traditional tire and a studded tire and kind of, you know, works, but I think the usage case, even here in Canada, it's very, very small. Uh, but for a studded tire, it, it worked. It was, and, and it worked great on the ice without compromise, but um, yeah, it's, it's, I think that's, that's what it's trying to be is, is a better compromise between a traditional studded tire and a non-studded tire. And, and I think they've, they've achieved that, but I mean, it's still loud on the road. It did have better grip on the, on the road, on the, on the wet asphalt than the, the traditional studded tire. So, I mean, I have, you know, only good things to say about it. And then, you know, they let me play all day driving sideways on ice. There's worse things. Yes. <laughs> That's like, like so. I, I feel like we have four, like we have traditional winter here, but like I never have imagined trying to put studs on tires. Like we don't have enough. It's so abusive sub to everything. Freezing temperatures. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, so in, in uh, the province of Quebec, they have a, uh, they have a mandatory winter tire law. Mm -hmm. So you can't run, you know, um, all weather tires. You can't run all seasons. Could you um, run you an to... all terrain? Like if it, like it's I know snowflake my... rating, isn't it? Snowflake yeah. rating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like my Toyos so, have that. Like I was yeah. super excited. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, th this particular studded tire from Continental is good for you know north of of Montreal and that sort of thing, where they've got they've got hard packed snow or ice on the roads all the time. Okay. Mm -hmm. The I, I had a, a neighbor who was a fleet manager and he went and visited uh, Bridgetown years ago. Maybe it's Firestone. I don't know, a tire manufacturer. And, and he asked me the what question, <laughs> like, what's the best coefficient of friction for snow? And I had no idea. It's snow. That, that's right. literally that why, why winter tires pack on snow onto pack the it. tire. They're, they're actively uh. trying to hold <laughs> more snow on the wheel or on the tire. Good Lord, the wheels in the middle. <laughs> Interesting. So, so that's what, that's what gives you better traction in snow is having oh. snow, more snow on the tire. Snow. So if you could have snow tires, literal snow tires, yeah, this would make sense. Yeah. That's <laughs> the point of a winter tire. So oh. literally try to create that. Jesus. <laughs> You're welcome, Russ. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hey, you started the show with a dad joke. He ended I, it with it. No, <laughs> that's fair. So the last thing I want to just touch on is the uh, the yellow splitter guard fiasco. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have the perfect image right here. Good, good. Because <laughs> oh, I, 
I still see that shit on cars being delivered. Yep. And I think they very recently stopped doing it. So keep keep that photo up, and I'm going to show you exactly what that is. So uh, you've you've taken creative liberty and satirical liberty on on the uh, the Challenger owners who leave the delivery like yellow bumpers on. Yes. And so, uh, and you've run with it. Yes. <laughs> so it's just yellow and, tape. And <laughs> it is yeah. this roll of yellow tape that that tape came from on that oh, Challenger. It's amazing. So um, the the splitter guard days are are actually over, but the the reason it started is I went to the factory when they were rolling up the Hellcats, the the the, the original narrow body Hellcats, and then they had the they had the yellow plastic splitter guard on the splitters. And I asked the foreman, what, you know, what are these here for? I've never seen them before. He's like, well, you know, they're there to protect the, the, the splitter during transportation, but they're also there to protect the uh, ankles of our workers because they end up hitting them on the corners of these big new splitters that are part of the Hellcats. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Then a year or two later, I'm, I'm teaching at Mosport and one of my pals I'm teaching with rolls up and he's got a Hellcat. And of course he left the splitter guard on. I'm like, dude, <laughs> just take that off. And those, those two incidents kind of were the catalyst. And then of course I'd been going to all the SRT events and you know, what it would have been a year and a half ago. Now I went to um, charger wide body up at, at Sonoma and uh, Mark Trossel, who's head of design or, or was head of design for SRT and Dodge at the time was there. And I, so you guys know what I'm thinking. I'm like, all right, I'm going to get, I'm going to get Mark on camera. So I did all the proper things, and I, I made the request formally. I didn't, cause I know Mark and, and I made the request formally through the PR channels. And I said, I'm going to interview Mark. And, uh, um, you know, I, I, I told Mark what we we're going to talk about. And um, cause I've got a segment every once in a while um, on the channel or in an episode, it's called the final word. So in this case, it's Mark on the final word about splitter guards. <laughs> Remember this. And, uh, and um, he's like, just take them off. You know, when I designed <laughs> this car, I didn't design them with splitter guards, take them off. Mm. And that's when he revealed that they were gonna become that purple pink color you see now. Mm. Yep. And um, what I did, I, I play, I mean, I'm not like super crazy YouTube guy, but what I did is I played the game that everybody else does. There was an embargo. So I did a tech and design review, um, which was whatever, a 10 or 12 minute piece that had no driving impressions mm -hmm. um, and just, you know, had Mark in there and, and just got a whole, bu whole bunch of other stuff. So I released that straight away. And then by the next morning, it went viral. All the all the the Buff Book websites picked it up. They ran with it. If you put my name and like splitter guards into into Google, it comes up with so many sites. It's in the forums. It just it totally blew up. I, I just love it, scrolling it through your Instagram because the Jeep's oh, got it, everything. the Volvo's got <laughs> no. it, the Hyundai's got yeah. it. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I put oh. it on a on a on an Aventador. Yeah. Jesus. Um, <laughs> The stinger, yeah, yeah, kind of. Every kinda. your cast, it, oh my cast, yeah. <laughs> WRX. But it yeah. hasn't deterred the owners from doing it because I see it all the time on like SXDs, like the V6 cars, you know, and like. Oh yeah, I last time I flew to Atlanta, um, uh, you know, I was there for for fun and business, and I, I picked up a rental car, and I, I'm in the rental car lot, and right next to me, there's a a Charger with one splitter guard still on it so of course i put that on my instagram story but it was just it was not, a good look. not a good uh, look we need uh, the next we need another color for it we got to get i mean it's got to make teal. its way back well the, the, i i don't i mean i don't know i might i might i might give away the roll of tape to one of my viewers or something <laughs> i don't know but that's that's the roll of tape that i've used for everything that's funny it's so good the same roll of tape that was at the there's a TST picture here a little bit ago with a yellow roll of tape in it. <laughs> oh yes, <laughs> yes I, I threatened Matt that I was gonna split her guard his studio. Oh my god. You should have done his cars without telling them. Uh, what did he the Countach yeah. is too pretty. <laughs> it's just, you can't. Yeah, I would not have touched no, the Countach. That... I don't uh, think it was there uh at, at um his place that probably day. in the Peterson. Well, when I went to the Peterson uh, on my subsequent trip to LA, it was there with yeah. uh, with Freddie's car as well. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but um, 
yeah, no, I, I, I threatened the splitter guard there, their studio. <laughs> I think Zach was a little more down with it than Matt was. Yeah, Zach's like, you I'm have sure. to go like, get an E46 and answer. like, you got to send the roll of tape to somebody who's going there to do a show and yes. not tell him, but have them <laughs> do it for you. <laughs> Well, I, I, I'm, I'm going to let them know that I'm going to be in town again soon. So, um, you know, I might, I might do a little offline thing with, with Zach and, and, and see what, uh, what we can do. Yeah. That, that might be so the great. final Splitter Guard episode. Yeah. Once and for all. Yes. Oh, man. All right. So, got anything else for us? Me? No. I'm, I, you know, as far as off-roading goes, like, I'm just a total noob and, and I've been, you know, able to enjoy all of these things primarily as you know being a uh, you know someone in automotive media but uh, I've, I've learned to love it so um, and and you know now when I'm in Southern California certainly I'll, I'll take advantage and, and um, you know I'm scheduling things for my next trip and, and I, I'm planning to take at least two vehicles up that same road to the same uh, top of the mountain and, and uh, you know have another Cuban cigar while I'm up there. So what are you trying to book? Uh, I'm, tr- I'm trying to, I'm trying to book a Bronco, uh, nice. sport. Okay. Um, <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, no, no, no yeah, sport. <laughs> yeah, sport. And, um, there, uh, there's there, yeah, there's two things I can't mention because they asked me not to. Um, <laughs> but they're, they're the kind of things that they probably don't want me to take up there, but they're, so we'll, you know, we'll see. And then I'll, I'll probably arrange some kind of pickup that ha- you know, maybe one of the AT fours or something, um, and, and, you know, do something like that. But I, you know, I drove the Tacoma there recently, so I got to do something else. Yep. Cool. I'm trying to think like what's off-road adjacent <laughs> would be those things yeah. that you probably shouldn't. <laughs> all, all I'm going to say is luxury SUV. Yeah, okay. That's oh, yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have so we many can, guesses. Uh, we'll connect the dots. Yeah. yeah well, <laughs> if, if you if, see a, if, 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 if you see a six figure SUV at the top of that same mountain, then the, the, yep. the story has been told. Given enough time, we can guess. Yes. <laughs> cool. Sweet. Uh, so where tell everyone where we can, and they can the many places. follow you. Yeah. Many places. <laughs> it's, it's Brian Max everywhere. M A K S E literally everywhere. You got the so. uh, you got the umbrella on that one. <laughs> you didn't get you know, that, that's out. that's the that's the beauty of having a unique uh, last name. So uh, whether it's YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, not TikTok, not Snapchat. No. Somebody <laughs> neither of those. I had ever. a conversation the other day with somebody. Well, it's not a conversation. We were talking back and forth and fucking tweets so it's not really a conversation. But uh, twenty twenty one conversation. It, yeah. Well, he was yeah. talking about how like he he wanted to get into tiktok but he never has the volume up on his phone so he's like why why would i do that why and i was like yeah i never had the volume up on my phone when when a video makes noise at me on my phone i panic i'm like what is happening like i just because i never have the volume on yeah me either my, my phone never rings yeah you have batman be a problem i just got background. tapped on the ankle <laughs> like i'm out of the shot <laughs> one second uh. All right. Well, on that note, Brian, <laughs> thank you for joining us. <laughs> thank you. Chris, Chris is tending to child. <laughs> that, that's that's what happened. My, mine is mine is grown. I remember those days. Yeah, I uh, I can't vouch for any of this. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, what a world. Oh yeah. <laughs> like literally, Chris is like. <laughs> He just walks in sometimes. It's uh, yeah, why not? The, it's the, fine. Like I saw him walk in fine. and I saw him walk back out, but then it was the tap down on my ankle. I wasn't he, expecting. He walked on frame and then <laughs> didn't walk back out. He just dropped. <laughs> Bolted. Oh, those were those were Fortnite fun. pajamas. Those are hand-me-down from my oh. older brother. So <laughs> oh, it looked like Batman. I didn't recognize it. Which is why he's okay with it, because he would prefer them to be Batman. So it's, okay. it's like Batman adjacent, so he's good with it. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> oh my gosh all right guys well, all right i'll wrap it up uh rate and review us on itunes we we still don't have any terrible ratings so we know we haven't made it big yet and i need to stop saying that because someone's just gonna shit all over us for the fun of it <laughs> uh you can like subscribe on youtube because we put the video up on youtube i shared a bunch of images from brian's instagram and uh twitter tonight and uh i did share a, a video of ozark international raceway which i'm gonna go drive 
uh you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on twitter the real Hooniverse on instagram because Hooniverse was too unique to get it on both somebody just stole it yeah asshole uh you can read our writing uh ross is no not like the one from friends on instagram i'm at overlanding dad that's the show that's the show a stressful week <laughs> yeah it's only it's only the beginning <laughs> it's only sunday night <laughs> yeah it's a new week <laughs> oh, even started. Man. we did we blasted 60 degrees like twice this last week so like what? it the hilarious part is like everybody went from like polar vo- vortex to 60 degrees like um they were comparing not not monday last monday but the monday before last it was minus 13 and then the next week it was 60 degrees. So it was a 70 degree swing. Jesus. Like, yeah, it was just, that's nuts. It's, no, thank it, you. It, it, we, like, I hear people say like, if you don't like the weather, wait five minutes, it'll change. And then I, I feel like I live in the very heart of that. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, that's our show. We're done. Yeah. I, well, we still I, haven't found a way to end the show. Well, yeah, we, <laughs> we need to like, uh, I mean, <laughs> That is, well, that is I, good. I, I will say thanks, guys. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and, uh, thanks for coming on. <laughs> well, thanks for coming on the show. It's been fun. <laughs>